Hey everyone, how you doing? Blue here, back with another Minecraft time lapse. Today we're going to be going over how to plan and build a medieval dock and this is going to be a pretty large build so we're just going to cover some of the basic principles that I follow when building. Now as always the first thing I do is completely clear the area. This includes things like grass and flowers that way it leaves us with a nice clean canvas to work from and just makes building a little bit easier. Now the second thing is making sure you choose the right location. Now for me, I really wanted to have a river running down the side of the docks. I think it would be a really nice feature. So I made sure that there was an area that we could have a river on the side. As you can see, we've got a nice big groove over here with a nice kind of curly S shape for a river. So it should be a really nice feature. Now there is a lot of grass marks in it. So what we're going to do is dig it out and then go ahead and refill it after. Now the reason I do this at the beginning of any project is because... It's much better to organize your terrain and everything beforehand because that way when you're planning any of your walls or builds you kind of know what you've got to work with rather than sort of making plans and then having to alter all the terrain after it just makes it a little bit easier if you plan it all in advance. So as you can see we're getting in the river over here and this is quite a big job if you're doing it in survival, but it is very doable. It's just a matter of digging out the river and then refilling it with your water buckets. Now that we've got all of the river in place, the next thing I will do is work on the terrain. So basically, I will just fill in any small little holes in the ground um, and then just cut off any ground that you know that you've got odd little patches of terrain. Just go and cut them out the way so you've got room to work. Once everything's all cleared up, it's time to start laying your plans for your main wall at the front of the docks. Now, this is the big main wall and not the decks at the bottom. Now, for this, I just follow a simple path and I normally tend to stick to odd numbers for most of the builds. So the gaps between all of these pillars here are five blocks. OK, there's, there's, there's a pillar on the first and fifth of every block. The best thing with sticking with the odd numbers is that you always have a center point for every wall. On the corners, we do go a little bit different because I normally go on a curve with a 5, a 3, a 2, a 1, and then we curve again and we go a 2, a 3, and a 5. That way, when you follow that principle, every curve you have around your docks on any of the walls is all going to look very similar. And that way, it kind of just all blends in nicely with each other rather than ha having a very odd shaped wall because sometimes it can be very hard to work with a wall if it is shaped very odd. Now, as you can see over the back here, once we start getting in the rest of these walls here, I go ahead and level off all of the, the terrain behind it. Now you can use grass or full, full cobblestone blocks or sand, whatever you want to fill it in. It doesn't matter. Just fill it in with something at first so that you've got a level ground to work with. You can always change the ground later on once you've sort of got your plans. But for the moment, we're just going to stick to covering up with some sand. And again, we're going to come down here with the walls for the uh, little river. And we'll be putting walls on both sides. And they're not necessarily even, but because we're going to be following the same curve pattern, it, it will look fairly even when it's finished. Now, like I said, most of the walls here are going to be five blocks wide. Okay, There's that in, in sections of fives. And we kind of make them sit a little bit further back from each other as we go along. And then when we get to the corners, we simply curve with a three, a two, and then a one, and then a two and a three block so that we get that even curve on every corner. And as you can see down here, every curve kind of blends, you know, it's a very smooth curve, but it all matches each other, even though it doesn't completely line up on both sides. Once we're finished, you'll see that it looks like it is designed to fit because every curve is angled the same way. Now, it's not always possible to do this in every every circumstance. Some builds you have to go off of that. But if you can, it's always good to keep your curves angled the same so that everything kind of blends well, you know, because if you have a big swirly wall that has too many different angles on it, it is going to start looking a little bit funny. Now, with that being said, we're going ahead here, guys, and again, just filling in all that ground behind all of the walls, just to even off all the ground. Now, I know it looks pretty flat at the moment, but we will be covering that in just a moment. But before we do anything else, the next step that I want to do when I get to this point is start filling in all of my proper blocks. 
Now, if you're in survival, it's good to do this from the start. So you use the right blocks from the start so that you know exactly what you're building with. But for me, I like to plan in creative so that I know how the shape is roughly going to look. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead, I filled in all of my walls with the stone bricks for the pillars. And then we've got some cobblestone and gravel behind for the backing walls. The ground is made up of stone, cobblestone, stone bricks and andesite. And as you can see, we've made a nice smooth slope for the terrain there. That way, as we go further into the build here for the, like, the village and stuff, the houses further back are going to be sitting a little bit higher. That way, as we're looking from further back, we get a nice viewpoint of the top of the houses from behind, making the area feel much more built up and much more like a city rather than just a little small town. As for the docks here, you can see I'm putting in all of my final little details here, guys, and I'm not doing anything too crazy. I know it looks quite busy, like there's a lot of things that I'm doing, but the work is actually pretty simple here. Once you've got all of your basic details in, you want to start working on some road layouts. Now, one thing that a lot of people do with their roads is they do all these plans, lay everything called down, and they think that they're a solid guideline that you have to stick to, which you don't. You know, these are just guidelines. We can move them at any point. But one of the main things you want to make sure that you do is that you make enough connections between everything so that you have plenty of roads to connect to roads. And you don't want to end up with any straight roads. Make them all curved and swerve around each other. That way, you create a nice natural flow throughout your village. Now, as you can see, we're moving on to planning out some houses here. And these are just some basic shapes. I'm making some diagonals, some straight, some ones with like loads of different sticking out bits. And I'm kind of trying to think in, some, in my head as I'm building what sort of things are going to be placed here. Now, these are, these are not necessarily things that they have to be. But I'm just trying to give myself a kind of a visualization of what is going to be sitting on the front of the dock and what's going to be sitting further back. Now, as you can see throughout doing that, we do go ahead and we changed a few things. You know, these layouts for these builds, then they're, as I'm building, I see a nice new pathway. So I start putting in a new path block so we can end up with more little roadways between the houses because, you know, this will make it much easier for villagers to get around. And it just gives it a much nicer natural flow when you have lots of little alleyways and roadways between everything. Now, as you can see, guys, we're finished up with the docks down the front here. And this is a pretty basic dock. There's not nothing too much here. I know it's quite large, but the, the, the design itself is a fairly simple design. All the houses over here, you can see we've got loads of them and they're all crammed together. But, but remember, when you're building to leave enough room so that when, you're, when you've got your roost, that they're not going to overhang and touch each other. So make sure you give yourself enough room but still keep them fairly close so that you can keep that kind of um, that cramped feeling of a city. You know, it just gives it a much more nice atmosphere when building. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to keep this one pretty short today, guys. But if you'd like to see a follow up part where we continue on this, build up the rest of the village and stuff like that, then please let me know in the comments and go ahead and smash that like button. I'm considering making this a series. So each series will take a new part of the village or a new section. We'll build it up. We can go over sort of color palettes, you know, choices for buildings, why I build certain ways how I plan where houses goes, how I plan where walkways goes, and all that. So we can cover a lot more subjects in general. But this one is just a start off, guys. So be sure if you be sure to let me know in the comments if you would like to see more sort of guides like this where we talk over a lot of the work in the process. But for now, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Just don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. But for now, this is Blue Nerd signing out, and I will catch you guys in the next one.